voiceover pricing. Specifically, the three levels of voiceover pricing. TGIF, how are you doing? Welcome to Friday, hope you're doing well. I'm Bill DeWeese, professional voiceover talent, voiceover uh, coach, voiceover demo producer. Every weekday morning, we get together for a few minutes to chat voiceover, and I always love it when you guys stop by. I appreciate it, and uh, make sure, if you haven't yet, to give me your name and where you're watching or listening from this morning. We'll do a little roll call in just a moment. Also, Fridays are traditionally our um, Q&A, so if you have a question on your mind, throw it up there in the uh, in the chat, and I'll do my best. I've got a two-hour session scheduled to start here shortly this morning, so I may not be able to hang around very long, but... I'll certainly do what I can, but here's there's a, an issue burning on my mind that I wanted to talk about this morning, and it's about voiceover rates and pricing. I, you know, I'm asked frequently, as you can imagine, um, you know, what should I charge for a voiceover? And the mistake that many, if not most, folks have made is, is they go online looking for an organization, some voiceover organization's uh, decreed rate that should be charged, that everybody should charge for whatever it is that they do. Uh, and that is, very, it's a very institutional way of doing things. Uh, you know, those who have, who come from, a, we'll, call, we'll say the old school, the institutionalized way of thinking, old school, uh, have a more unionized way of thinking where um, they will take what I would consider to be, and I'm going to talk about the three pricing strategies. One is a luxury pricing strategy where you try to get top dollar for what you do and you don't want anybody else to charge less because you, you're afraid that that would undercut your ability to earn. Which I think there's there's so many holes in that entire argument, which I don't have time to get into this morning. But I do want to touch on the three pricing strategies so that you have an understanding and you choose what you want to do. You know, I'm not here to tell you how to price. I'm here to share with you business strategies that work, that I use, and that work, you ultimately have to decide what you want to do. You can charge, and that's the great thing about it, an economic system like in America, you can do it however you want to do it. It may not work. Maybe it will. You know, you got to do what works What works for you. And that's that's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. But let's let's look to business. Let's look uh, at, some, at some proven track records of, of companies who have been successful at this over many years. And if, I think if we look at the airline and the hospitality industries, <clears throat> those are the two best industries to look at for pricing strategy. Or at least these are the these are the models that I use when I price. The three pricing strategies are number one, it's a value strategy. I'm sorry, it's a budget strategy. The budget strategy says, you know what, I'm going to, I'm definitely going to, or the, the customer wants to get more than what they pay for. So they're going to pay a lower than maybe typical price, and they they want a lot for that. And that's, you know, that's like the Walmart model, high volume, low cost. And the way they, they make up for that is they do a very high volume of business. So it works for them. It's a valid strategy. The next strategy is uh, a, a value strategy. Value is where you say, you know, uh, as a customer, you want more than you're paying for, but you're willing to pay more than the person who shops at Walmart to get it. So you're going to get a few perks. You know, it's not going to be so, the service is not going to be so stripped down. And then finally, there's the luxury where it's like, I don't care what I need to pay for it. I want what I want and I want it when I want it. And, and the thing you have to understand about these three levels is there's, there's different levels of service that come with these. So let's look very briefly at the airline and the hospitality industry. If you book, if you book a, um, a flight on pretty much any carrier, I think it's pretty pretty well known, it's common knowledge, that you could be sitting beside somebody who paid far differently for their ticket than what you did. Plus, there are different levels of service on the plane. There may be a first class or a business class, um, and I haven't flown for several years, so I don't know what all the latest iterations of this are, but uh, you might be like in an economy plus where you can have a little more leg room. And if you're in the economy, of course, uh, you're going to pay less, but for that, you're going to get less service. You only get to eat a few peanuts on the trip, and you have no leg room, just to give you a general idea. If it's a hotel, as you well know, the person in the room next to you may be paying a very different price than what you're paying, and it has to do with availability of that company to serve you, rooms available, and when you book it. And and those are just a few of the things. Like, you know, with the airlines, it could be uh, the person next to you may have bought a ticket that's non-refundable. And so it's a lower level of service, and they're going to pay less for that. Point being is this. The one-size-fits-all approach 
in my opinion, it's it's bogus and it's used by others to try to try to protect their turf. And so you have to understand that. This all is driven by usually driven by money. And as a business, your job as a business is to provide as much value as you can for people and to create as much profit as you can while doing it. Don't let anybody stop you from doing that. And if you want to if you decide that you want to operate by somebody else's rate sheet, there's nothing wrong with that. You can do that. But just to understand why you're doing it and understand how these what the model these pricing models look like and what they're trying to accomplish and the uh, the pitfalls that could come with that in any of these because there's pros and cons within any of these. I operate within all three. It you know and it really boils down. I don't have time to go into a deep explanation on this short video this morning, but it has to do with levels of service. Whether I'm proofing something, to what extent I'm going to spend time when it comes to editing. And by the way, my philosophy is I give everybody a finished product. When it's done, it's finished. But in terms of how quickly I do it, how many times I'm going to provide revisions, um, if I'm going to proof it, uh, you know, all of these things are levels of service. And the higher and the more, more service that you want, the higher you should expect to pay. But there's certainly nothing wrong with taking a bare bones approach, more of a Walmart approach, where you're doing a higher volume and you're doing a good product, but you're not giving the luxury level service that maybe somebody else might. It's a valid pricing strategy. It works in the automobile business too. You know, everybody needs a car, right? We need to go from point A to point B, and that's what a car does. It all provides that particular level of, of, uh, of service. But in terms of what we get with that and how we want to transport from point A from point B, we're willing to spend a ver widely varying amount of money. As you know, you could take, I mean, you put a Ford Fiesta up to, a, up to an Escalade, for instance. There's a huge, huge pricing difference, but they perform the same function because some people are, can and are willing to pay more for a higher level of service, comfort, features, all of that kind of stuff. And it's, it can work that way in any business, including voiceover. So don't let anybody bully you or intimidate you into saying, well, you need to do this. If you want to do that, that's fine. But understand this model of the three-tier pricing structure. And um, I think if you allow a little flexibility, I mean, start with it. You can have a rate sheet. I certainly do. But there's flexibility built into that depending all of, on all of these variables that I just talked about. And by doing that, I'm able to stay pretty darn busy and make quite a bit of money recording voiceovers. And that's what I want for you as well. Okay. Wow, glad I got that off my chest this morning. I hope you find that helpful. You may have to go back and watch that a time or two, the video, just to, to, for it to make sense. I tried to cram as much information. I tried to teach an entire class on pricing in, you know, five minutes. Let's see who we've got in the chat. We've got Rob in the San Francisco Bay Area. How are you doing? Aaron in Columbia, Missouri. Bob in Reedsville, North Carolina. Doug in Greensboro, North Carolina. Brian in Tucson. Rusty in the UP of Michigan. Sarah, good morning. Monica in Poland. How are you doing? Barb in Ann Arbor. Megan in Manitoba. Jack in Phoenix. We've got... Uh, Scapoose, is that right? Am I right on that, JL? Scapoose, Oregon, good to have you here this morning. We've got Wayne in the Olympic Mountains installing acoustic treatment in the new booth today. Wayne, fantastic. Good luck with all of that. Hope it uh, gives you the sound that you're looking for. Theo, happy fry yay from the empty streets of downtown Chicago. Everyone stays home on Friday. Is that the case, Theo? I did not know that. I haven't been into the city for several years now. I don't know what's going on downtown. Empty on Friday. I'll have to make. I was telling Vicky the other day. I want to go. I want to have um, lunch at the Grand Lux sometime here soon in the future. Maybe I'll plan that for a Friday or Friday breakfast. Uh, we've got uh, Andrew in Calgary, Mike in South Alabama, Ron in Charleston, Wade in Philadelphia, Ty in Warsaw, Indiana. Pumped for voiceover today. Awesome, Ty. That's what I love to hear. Hey, Mark. Good morning to you in Estes Park, Colorado. It's elk rutting time, and they are running wild. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine they are. And I, I think, if I'm not mistaken, this is the time you want to stay out of the way of elk. You probably want to stay out of their way anytime. But aren't they particularly aggressive this time of year? Uh, hey, Gregory, your sessions always allow me to leave better informed. Thanks from Ringgold, Georgia. Thank you, Gregory. Melissa in San Diego. What's up, Melissa? Uh, the first question I used to ask is what their budget was. 
it, if it was below my range, I'd let them know and ask them how wiggle, much, much wiggle room they have. There you go. We'll see that. And, and that, that's a negotiation strategy, which is uh, the next step after the pricing strategy. So that's, that's good. Good stuff. Rusty, is there a rate card that we should look at to see how to at least structure it? I know what we charge is our business, but just a template. Let me tell you what, you know, when I first got started, what I did, a lot of folks post their rate cards on their websites. So I just started going to voiceover talent websites and looking to get an idea, a range. I think it'd be a mistake just to look at one. So go out there and just start nosing around and see what's going on. Uh, Julie in Hummelstown, how you doing? Scotty was just watching the blueprint on rates last night. Scotty, the blueprint, glad you're using it as your resource. Yes, yes, yes. In Brookings, South Dakota. Bruce, hello in Louisville. Terry, what's up in Falston, Maryland? Excellent pricing models. My part of my background is in sales. Price does not scare me, but great advice. Thank you, Terry. And I'm glad the price doesn't scare you. It does terrify so many people that don't come from your background. Uh, Denise in rainy Long Island. Sarah, I just did my very first uh, read slash audition for the Auschwitz Museum and Foundation of Poland. I had every technical difficulty imaginable, but it got done. <laughs> Hoping to get it. I'd love to help them. I, Sarah, I hope you get it too. Yes, absolutely. And I'm certainly no stranger to those technical issues. I'm glad you made it through. And that's one of the great things. You do this long enough, you'll have plenty of problems. But what you'll, fit, what you'll learn is that you always survive it. You know, no technical problem will destroy your career. You can all, you'll always make it through. Okay, let's see here. We've got Dave in, in New York. Good morning. VoiceOver Blueprint showing ROI two days in. Whoa, thanks. And God bless to you and your team. You put a lot of work into your product. Dave, you know, if you do me a favor, if you don't mind, when you get a chance, drop me an email. To, if you don't mind, give me some specific numbers. Um, man, I'd love to use that as a testimonial because sometimes people say, you know, they're like, no, but yeah, it does work. And thanks for sharing that. Um, should your performance ever be less or in accordance with the pay? Well, I never try to do a worse job based on pay. And if that's what you're getting at, I mean, I'm going to, if they're paying for, me, what they hear from me, I'm going to give them me. But the question is, what level of service? How many, you know, how many takes? How many revisions? Am I going to let them do a live directed session? Am I, if it's a longer project, am I going to proof it? Those are the kind of things that really I'm talking about. They, they always get my best work. It's not that I'm not trying to do my best work. It's really all of the levels of service added onto that. In lovely Loveland, it's Rob Ryder. Good morning, Rob. Uh, oops, the stream just moved on me. Wally, how you doing? AJB says, wow, great information today. I now feel comfortable charging what I want instead of what I'm told to. Thank you, Bill. You're very welcome. Thank you. Sarah says, reach more people in English-speaking countries. Yes. Uh, Nancy in Yankton, South Dakota. Thanks for being here, Nancy. Hey, David in Gardner, Kansas, I wish you and your family a great weekend. Thank you. You too. It's going to be a busy weekend around here. Uh, we've got, I mentioned this yesterday, but, you know, this house that we moved into, and that lovely house, love the house, so I don't, I'm not trying to complain, but it's just, you know, when you move into a house that hasn't been updated, like in 20 years, it's kind of one of those kind of things. So there's just a lot of stuff, and we're going to start with painting the entire house. And recarpeting, there's carpet in the basement, hardwood on the main floor in the, uh, in the upstairs. But so on Monday, we're, uh, we start, the crew comes in for painting and then we'll be carpeting. But that's, this is where my studio's at. So we've got to tear all this down. I'm moving into a closet upstairs. When you see me on Monday, it won't be in this booth. So we'll, fingers crossed. Hopefully that all works out okay. Professor Tracy in Rochester, hope you're doing well. Dean in Lake El uh, Elsinore, California. I hope I said that right. Elsinore. Yeah. James in Binghamton, Nor uh, New York. We've got uh, Kaizen in Mongolia. Thanks for being here today. JL says, you got it right. Yeah, Jim, how are you doing? In San Antonio, what's up? Theo, I think a bunch of people work from home on Fridays. Yeah. I, I mean, who can blame them? You want to start the weekend as soon as you can. Get it done and then get to the weekend. Alexander says, good afternoon from sunny Skopje, Macedonia. Worth watching and listening to as always. Well, thank you, Alexander. Thanks for being here. 
Robert and Altoona, have a great day and weekend. Go Hawkeyes. <laughs> Should have worn my Ohio State shirt today, I see. Uh, we've got AG in, oh, I'm sorry, I missed, so, uh, Claire, sorry about that, I almost skipped over you. Claire says, it's Friday, happy VO day from Prescott, where the javelina chomp your bird seed in your front yard. That must be a type of bird? Uh, fin- I'm not familiar with all the, the varieties. Uh, finishing my music mixed with music DIY demo today, thanks for all you do. All right, Claire, that's fantastic. Another, another proud member of the voiceover blueprint there, as many of you are. And I love that. Thank you for that. AG in India. Have an excellent weekend, Bill. Thank you, AG. You too. Do I have an automated life management and backup system in place? I don't have an automated oh file. I thought you said life management. I thought, man, that would be awesome to have an automated life management system just to tell me what to do when I need to do it and to kick me in the butt when I need to get moving. That'd be awesome. Um, the file management system... That I, I mean, I, I do have a system that I use, a way that I do things. It's nothing overly complicated. I keep all my clients. I keep separate client folders. And then on my, on my actual computer, but it's all uh, synced to a Dropbox account. So everything is synced in the cloud. And you don't have to use Dropbox to do that. You can do that. There's a number of services you can do that. But I highly recommend that you, wherever, whether you keep it on your local hard drive or you have an external hard drive, that you also keep it in the cloud. Um, that's a, a level of protection, I think, that's absolutely necessary. Nick in New York. Peterson, how are you doing? In uh, Africa, Kenya, fantastic. Claire, wild. Javelinas are wild hogs. Whoa, did not know that. But I'm a, I'm a Midwest guy. I know more about, like, tornadoes and you know, black snakes, which I have to dodge when I'm out walking the trail, uh, deer, pheasant, wild turkey, squirrels, you know, uh, maybe have some of that stuff out there too. I don't know. Okay. All right, guys. Thanks for being here. I appreciate it. Have a wonderful day. Have a great weekend. And when I see you again Monday morning, uh, it will be from a, a different, uh, a different venue. <laughs> A couple floors up and in a, in a bedroom closet. Also, today is the last day, last day to get the recordings of my um, live training from Tuesday night, which was, um, what are we doing Tuesday? Oh, it was the secrets of self-performance. I got so much going on. I got a, I need a life management system. The secrets of self-direction, I'm sorry, how to give your best performance. The recordings of that event it went like an hour, 40, hour, 45 minutes. They're available. The link is below. At midnight, we pull those and we're done with them, um, at least in terms of selling them. So if you want those, check them out. Have a great day, great weekend, and we'll talk to you soon.